Hello, welcome. My name is Timothy Anete. If you are here for the first time on my channel, I do two things. I create content that helps business people, most importantly, the realtors, the real estate um, business promoters. And I also share content that help the conventional business people, that is those in buying and selling, that's B2B and um, B2C. So I help, basically, my content is for B2B and the B2C. But um, I focus more on the realtors. So this particular video, I'm going to be talking to realtors. All right, so um, let me speak a bit to you this moment if you are a realtor. You see, you have to understand that as a realtor, you are not supposed to create conventional ads. All right, your approach in advertising, it's not supposed to be conventional. All right, so that's why I titled this particular video as Unconventional Advertising Approach for Real Estate. Okay, so pay close attention if you are a realtor, if you are a real estate developer, or you have anything that has to do with um, real estate. All right, so... First of all, if you are new to this channel, I will want you to do me just one little favor. Click on the subscribe button to this particular account and then turn on the notification bell. And don't also forget to like and share this video so more people can get to see it. And you, by that, you are also going to um, see more of my videos on different subjects that will help your business in sales and marketing. All right, and most importantly, using the digital media, using technology, okay? So first of all, before you activate your campaign for today, or let's say for this new month that we are entering, um, in about, in less than 24 hours, we are gonna be entering into the new month. Uh, February is here, all right? So before you activate that campaign, if, a unit of your property is more than two million naira. You shouldn't. Your campaign shouldn't be a conventional one at all. All right. So first of all, understand that we have the conventional and the unconventional kind of campaigns. That is kind of ads. All right. So which one is the conventional and which one is the uh, unconventional? How are they categorized? You see, in media buying. Specifically, in media buying, I'm talking about the advertising um, ad aspect. In business advertising, in advertising, that's what we refer to as media buying, we call it the generic coverage campaign. Now, generic coverage campaign simply means that it is not defined. All right? The conventional campaign is an undefined campaign. It's generic. You can just decide to do anything and target just everybody and anybody, all right? You, you, are, you, you've not defined the goal of the campaign. You've not defined who the campaign is meant for. You've not defined where they can be gotten from. You've not defined the kind of creative that will penetrate their interest. You've not defined how many of these persons you are looking for. You've not defined how long the campaign is going to last. So basically, it's just very conventional. You just, maybe it could even be a post boost, all right? It could even just be, uh, as you made a post on your business page, Facebook suggested that you should boost the post to get to more people. And you are excited because you saw the button that turned active to boost it. And then one or two steps, you've boosted the post and day in, day out, you keep seeing that like, you keep seeing that comment. And then it interests you. It gave you that kind of feeling that, yeah, you've created an ad. So that's in the area of conventional campaign, all right? Not fully defined, okay? So that is the conventional. The unconventional campaigns are not generic, all right? They are not the generic coverage campaign. The generic coverage campaigns are in the category of um, the conventional, all right? So the unconventional is a well-defined campaign. Okay, so that is why I am suggesting that you should not run a generic campaign for your real estate business, you should not run a conventional campaign. 
Now, as I've always said, treating real estate as a special product will also help to activate your mind, all right, in the way you project the business. Now, I said this earlier, even the platforms you are advertising is most importantly for those who are trying to target Nigerians in diaspora. You get to understand that the advertising medium in which you are even trying to use to reach these people in diaspora do not allow you to directly serve this particular audience with the message that carries real estate. The reason is that it is categorized as special, right? Special ad category, meaning that real estate is a special product, special industry. So as such, if you are going to be creating any ad campaign, you should sit, first of all, and understand that you are creating ad for a special industry. You are creating ad for a special product, all right? So you shouldn't just click and run ad as a conventional product, all right? So what should you do rather? Now, before you hit your ad manager, before you make clicks to your ad manager now, one of the things I need you to sit back and define are one, primarily, you have to, first of all, define the goal of your campaign as a real estate, all right? As a realtor that you are trying to create campaigns for your properties, you have to, first of all, define the goal. Now, this art that you are creating, what do you intend to have with this app? Are you just advertising so you can let more people see this property or you are advertising so you can sell the property? Or are you advertising so you can create awareness for your brand? Are you advertising so you can establish more followers so you can gain more followers to your page? Are you advertising so you can get known? So what's the primary um, goal of the campaign is it so you can get leads leads that will do what after you've gotten them so very important you have to be able to define everything before you kick start all right define the goal of the campaign now the second thing you must define is who are you directing the ad to all right who the ad will be directed to who are the people that you are directing the ad to, all right? Who should you target for this campaign, all right? With the campaign you are creating, who are your target? Who are you serving the ad to? You don't just want it to be on every everyone's um, eyes. So who are you sending the campaign to? Who are you targeting, all right? So the number three thing you should define should also be, how long will it run? Now, so some of us just um, go to ad manager because we understand how to make one or two clicks and then send the ads um, started and then you, maybe you define it or you optimize it rather for messaging on WhatsApp. Now you have not sat back to ask yourself, how long will this ad run so you can place your ad budget effectively? Is it gonna be a lifetime budget? or is going to be a daily budget. Now, what's the advantage of using a lifetime budget? What's the advantage of using a daily budget? One of the things you must understand is that for every campaign you are creating and for every duration you have provided for your campaign, if that campaign gets turned off, if that campaign gets turned off, for instance, your money gets exhausted in that account, two things will happen you will your account your your media the platform you're advertising from the medium uh, the algorithm on that platform will lose the connection the communication all right it's going to restart afresh by the time you add money to that account it means that all the data that has been gathered earlier when your ad was active would be lost and by the time you fund the account again, the algorithm will be trying afresh to regain connection, to reestablish communication with what you had instructed the ad to do and also the gathered data, all right? Because this 
medium actually generates results based on the gathered data, right? For instance, your ad can actually be instructed to serve the most performed creative the more, right? Now, when the data has been lost, it simply means that the system does not identify which of your creative was one of the was the most performed that it can make it um, the loudest. All right, so you have to start learning about the system. The system has to start learning about the campaign afresh. All right, so basically, you also have to define the locations it will cover. Are you targeting people in UK? Are you target, targeting people in the entire United Kingdom or are you targeting people in Nigeria, in the entire Nigeria, or you are targeting people only in Lagos, or you are targeting in Abuja, or you are targeting in Port Harcourt, which, what, what state are you targeting? Who are the people you are targeting? All right, so basically you have to define their locations. If you are targeting Nigerians in diaspora, you have to also know, okay, I'm targeting UK so that you can measure. So I've always said this, don't target two countries at a time, all right? So that you can be able, when you are making effort in targeting Nigerians in diaspora, so you can be able to define which to amplify, which to optimize, um, sorry, which to scale rather, which one is giving you more results. You understand which particular location, which particular country um, gives you more results so you can know how to um, scale that particular campaign. Now you can also decide to target based on a city, based on a state rather in that particular country. So you also be able to define, all right, which of these particular location gives more results. If you are gonna be targeting in Nigeria, um, is it Lagos, is it Abuja? Even if you have property in Lagos, one of the things you must understand is that, I, I think I shared this some time ago. There are Yoruba people who are working in oil firms in Port Harcourt. There are Yoruba people who are working in ExxonMobil, in Eket, in Aquaibom. There are equally Alsa people who are actually working in those locations as well. So if your property is in Abuja, you know that most northerners who want to invest in properties in Abuja, all right? Most Yorubas would also want to invest in properties in Lagos. Likewise, investing in properties in the states that they dwell. So what should you do? You should actually learn how to filter and um, target people based on their capacity and then be able to bring them back with reasons why they should invest, even when they are not in Lagos, why they should invest in Lagos, when they are not in Abuja, why they should invest in Abuja. Now, 90% of those who buy properties are buying it based on the why factor. They are not buying it because they really wanted to buy that particular location. Now, most of them buy that particular location based on the why that we're giving to them why they should buy that location, all right? So basically that has always been one of the reasons people buy an established why, all right? Not necessarily because they live there. There are so many people in Lagos who do not buy properties in Lagos, but they are buying properties elsewhere. Now they are buying because of why factor, all right? They have their reason until you have been able to establish that why they should buy in that particular loca location where you have a property. You may not successfully be able to sell that particular location to them. So always go with the why. All right, so another thing you must define is the number of persons it will reach. Now, you do not just um, set up campaign. How many people do you intend to cover with this campaign? Now, listen, I always say this. If you want to make one sale, you must have interacted with at least 1,000 minimum of people. How do I mean by interaction? When I say interaction, 
at least your art must have had an established contact, all right, with this number of person. I'm not talking about flip over. I'm talking about an established contact. It gained the attention, all right? Your campaign must have gained the attention, dragged them to yourself, all right? So for you to be able to sell 10, you must have spoken with 1,000. Or most times, you must have even reached 10,000 to be able to sell 10. To sell one, you must have reached 1,000. So it, it, it's just more like the more you reach, the more your chances, all right? So don't take chances when it comes to coverage, all right? The more you reach, the more your chances for conversion, all right? So another thing you must also take very seriously is that you must define the number of leads that you expect from this campaign. Now, let's take, for instance, you have five units of these properties to sell. All right, so how many leads do you need to generate to be able to convert five units? I mean, to convert five, to sell the five units. Let's take, for instance, you just want 1% of the leads you capture. So how many percent, how many leads would you capture for 1% to be five? All right, in terms of conversion, converting 1% of your lead, how many would you capture to convert just 1%? Now you have to check out that and then be able to make sure that you've measured everything before you kickstart. Now, the next thing is the results the lead will generate. I've just said that, all right? You want just 1% convert, 1% conversion at the lowest, 1% conversion. So it means that you have to reach a certain, you have to acquire a certain number of leads to be able to convert just 1%. This is not bad at all, but the most important thing is that it has to be measured, all right? You have to be able to measure it effectively, all right? How much you are going to spend for the campaigns is in the duration, how long it's going to run, all right? How much are you going to spend in this campaign? So you have to be able to measure your campaign budget as well. So measuring your campaign budget will help you define the duration that your campaign will run without him being, I mean, without the, he, without the campaign getting paused because of exhaustion of budgets. All right. So with this, you have been able to define your campaign. You are not creating a conventional campaign. Everything you are going to do by the time you get to the ad manager now, after defining it, it's with a direction, all right? You already know what this is about, all right? You have a defined campaign. You are creating an unconventional thing, all right? You are, going, you are not going to be creating what everyone does. You are creating something that you've defined based on your target, all right? So after you've made this defined target, all right, after you've made this defined campaign, you've analyzed and done everything. The next thing you should do is how. Now ask how. Now, how would you be able to, def I mean, to establish what you've defined? You know, in most cases, they look like wishes. These are the number of people I wish to reach. These are the number of conversions I wish to have. These are the locations I wish to target, all right? So, in most cases, like I said, they look like wishes. Now, after you've been able to define them, you now sit back and ask yourself, how do I get to make this happen? How are you going to be able to make this happen? So, first of all, you have to define what creative will gain your audience's attention. All right. Now, in terms of the lead targeting, how so that you can be able to generate the right lead what kind of creative will gain the right targeting okay so um something happened on saturday i the week was quite very stressful for me and i decided that i was going to um sit out a little bit so i took i i, I left i spent quite some time at um lakey gardens on saturday so i just sat out and i uh, was just trying to unwind then I flipped through my phone and a reel popped up on Instagram. An Instagram reel popped up. It was a lady. Now, the lady did something that really, really was 
very interesting to me. Now, I, I, I will say the lady is one of the smartest uh, marketers I've met, all right, when it comes to real estate. She's one of the smartest realtors that I've seen. Now, her first 45 seconds was not meshed up in the area of sales. Her first 45 seconds was used to establish what I called as industry authority. All right, she used her first 45 seconds to establish her authority in real estate industry. All right, after which she presented her offer. Now, when I talk about you understanding the specialty in real estate industry, it has to do with so many things. All right, so this lady was using video um, she was using a video um, video creative. And then her first 45 minutes was not used, 45 seconds rather, was not used to talk about the property. It was not used to talk about um, the location. It was not used to talk about the price. It was not used to talk about the discount. Her first 45 minutes, seconds rather, was used to handle what would make an average Nigerian pay attention to a stranger. Okay, so what she did was she understood that some of the people that will meet her are strangers. So she spent time to let them understand that she knows their fears. She spent time and let them understand that she knows their previous experiences. All right, so one of the things she did was she started by documents, analysis. She started by letting them understand how to spot fraudulent properties, letting them understand how to spot locations that will appreciate fast, letting them understand how to invest in real estate and have better rewards in the next few years. Now, those, those are just brief few things that she did. After she did that, she now brought in her property, all right, the one she was promoting, and told them already, you remember, she's already guided them in the right investments. I've told you this time without numbers. You are not selling just real estate. You are first of all seen as one who will be able to guide an investor into making the right investment decision. All right, so that's the primary thing that is expected of you. So even when you are creating your ad campaign, your creative should be able to handle this. This is why in real estate, video campaigns, video creative rather, will always serve better than image creative, all right? Always go for um, video creatives, all right? And when using video creatives, you must also be able to establish an important fact, all right? You must also be able to establish the whys. You must also be able to establish the authority. Don't just place an offer. Don't just place discounts, all right? These people just met you. While you are going to place your offer and discount, urgency and threats and everything that is needed to quickly close the sale. You must also be able to establish an authority in your creative as well. All right, let them understand that you know what you are doing. All right, let them also understand that you are not just one who wants money. You are one who can guide them into making the right investment decision. All right, what ad objective will give you the right result? So sit back. Understand the ad creative you should choose. You know, on Facebook, there is a video, there's a video on my channel that explains different ad objectives, different Facebook ad objectives. All right. Sit back and on and study, listen, watch that video and understand the ad objective that will be very effective for your campaign before you launch it. All right. What interest and behavior in details targeting would give you the right result? I've also done this. 
if you check my channel, you will see a particular video that is titled How to Target the Rich. How to target people who have money to buy your product. That particular video has explained in details how to filter uh, behavior and interest in your detailed targeting. All right, so what placement should you use? Now, um, I've also tried to explain a couple of times in when you go to your ad campaign, you will see advanced plus placements. All right, advanced plus placement and manual placement. Most times, you, the advanced plus placement will be recommended. Now, advantage plus, rather, advantage plus. I think that's advantage plus, not advanced plus. Advantage plus placement. It will be recommended by the advertising medium. Now, one of the reasons why it's recommended is that it's going to cover so many advertising options. All right. But then you can as well decide to measure your campaigns and know which one delivers the better result. Now, when you get to your placement section, what you should do is that you can always go to your first ad sets and allow it to be advantage plus and then duplicate the same campaign and then under your ad sets you use the manual and then uncheck the ones that you do not need and allow the ones that you want to also test probably the advantage plus will also deliver to facebook instagram um, at place at um, third party ad platforms that Facebook and Instagram has up, um, uh, ability to place your campaigns on the uh, on site kind of placement and all that article uh, that's content uh, marketing platform and all that and um, online apps. So uh, after that, you can duplicate the campaign and make it only on instagram you want to serve it only on instagram all right with this you can then sit back and measure which delivered a better result which delivers the most results for you and from there you can know which one to scale and which one to kill all right now what should the campaign be optimized for now after you have chosen your placement the next thing you have to consider is what are you optimizing it for? Is it for messaging? And if it is for messaging, which app? Is it going to be Messenger? Is it going to be WhatsApp? Is it going to be uh, Instagram message? So which one are you optimizing it for? All right. If it's going to be optimizing to your funnel, are you optimizing for landing page views or you're optimizing for lead capturing? So you have to also know which you are optimizing for. So basically, I've always advised you as a realtor to always optimize your campaign in two ways, for leads and for landing page views. All right, so when you are optimizing, when you are using the lead objective and optimizing it to your um, website, now you are going to use two ways. So when they get the lead, that's when you are going to be um charge all right you are optimizing for lead capturing and then you are sending it to your website and you can as well with your pixel identify where the lead capturing results will be recorded that is your pixel can track it all right so on capturing on every lead capture that's when you are charged and alternatively if you do not have your pixel set up which I highly recommend that you have your pixel set up um, before you run lead capturing campaign. So you can always track and also retarget. All right, so you can use um, the landing page view. You can optimize for landing page view. But take notes. I just said that you should always set up your pixel and optimize for lead capturing and also set up your events for the lead capturing page. All right, so that your pixel will be able to record to track the event and be able to record when and how the leads are captured so you can be charged effectively without you spending money without results. All right. So if you have um, learned a thing or two from this video, I want you to turn on 
click on the subscribe button, turn on the notification bell, and also give this video a thumbs up, all right, while I bring you another video some other time. Don't forget, my name is Timothy, and I will see you in another video.